Well, hello, girls prep Bronx scholars. How are you? My name is Lori Stokes, and I'm a broadcast journalist here in New York. I've been in New York since 1996 when I first started working for MSNBC, and in 2000, I started working for WABC. I was there on the anchor desk in the morning, bright and early for 17 years. And then I left in 2017 and I went to Fox 5 where I anchor in the morning also, but a little later. I used to have to get up at about 1.30 in the morning when I worked at Channel 7 because I had to be at work at four o'clock and I was coming from New Jersey. And now I'm on from seven to 10, so I get to sleep in a little bit. Um, but it's been a great road for me. I love being a journalist. I love interviewing people and telling their stories. Sometimes it's a little depressing and then other times it's uplifting, but I love to write and uh, I like to listen to people. And I like to help other people form their opinions about things that really matter in our world. So let me say this also, because I know a core value at your school is sisterhood. And I can tell you, I have learned there is nothing like having good girlfriends that you can trust and you can lean on and you can pour your heart out to, that you can laugh with and you can cry with on both a professional level and also a personal level. I have about seven dear, dear friends, my girlfriends, and we are, as they say, thick as thieves. That means we're really, really tight. And um, we never judge each other. We support each other. We ask each other for advice because we come from all different fields and different expertise. Uh, some of us are lawyers or in the music business or for me on television. Uh, I have a friend who's at public relations, um, a doctor, and all of us bring something fabulous to the table. And, and I find that through life, it's important to have those bonds with other women. Uh, in my life, aside from, of course, my mom, my aunt, and I have two sisters, all of them are powerful in my life and all of them have been very special and um, have given me great wisdom. And I look up to them, particularly my mom, of course. Uh, my mom is an artist and she's no nonsense. And she raised all four of us while my dad was working hard. And so I look up to her, but on a professional level, I would say there was a lady named Betty Endicott and she was in my business. She was a journalist, but she was the boss. She was a general manager at the Fox station in Washington, DC. And when I was in college at Howard University, my assignment was to interview somebody in the business. And I selected her. I was supposed to only have 15 minutes with her. And I sat in her office and she ended up giving me an hour and a half. And I get a little emotional when I think about her because she was so smart and so honest with me and so open with me about the business and being curious and writing well and not taking no for an answer, which is by the way, I hope that, that I can lend that wisdom to you, never take no for an answer. There's nothing that you can't do. And then of course there are other women, uh, Robin Roberts, you know, Robin Roberts on Good Morning America. She's been so instrumental in my life and Diane Sawyer. Um, and then other women that just maybe aren't high profile, but I admire people that are strangers and people that I know. So it's always important uh, to uplift each other um, don't be the catty girl. Don't be the one who snitches and, um, and spreads rumors, those kinds of things. Be positive. Show your sisters that you're there in their corner. Because I'm going to tell you, as you grow older, you're going to find you're going to need them. 
and, um, and that's a beautiful thing. So listen, you know, I'm used to always asking the questions, but my understanding is that you have some questions for me to answer. So I'm going to take the first question. Stokes, I'm London Malcolm, and I'm in fifth grade. In honor of Black History Month, what does it feel like to be the first African American to speak on cable news network MSNBC? And how did it feel to be the lead female anchor in WJLA? So that was in 1996. And um, right after the main anchor said, Good morning and welcome to MSNBC. Let's get the latest headlines from Lori Stokes. It was me. The pressure was on me. And um, you know, I guess I feel like a pioneer in a way. I feel as if I um, have paved the way for other um, young journalists, females of all hues, black and brown and others. Um, I guess I felt a certain sense of responsibility because when you're in that kind of position, you don't want to fail. Um, but let me say this also. There is nothing wrong with failing. Because I feel like if you don't sometimes fail at some things, then, then you don't know how to overcome obstacles. And you can look back so much more when you achieve things at learning from that moment. Um, I'll give you a quick example. So I used to work in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. And I worked at a station, WCIA. And um, I had a live shot. And all night they had been saying, Lori Stokes is going to have this report on a trooper that had been killed. It's going to be a live report. Stay tuned. Well, when the moment came for me to do the live report, it wasn't too good. I stumbled. I didn't do that great. I went back to the station. I even erased the tape so I would never see it come back to haunt me. And then um, I made a vow to myself that I would never fair, fail at um, broadcasting a live report again. So it made me stronger. That failure made me make a promise to myself that I could be better, that I could do better. And, um, and so that's what I did. Um, so yes, MSNBC was a great experience. Um, uh, I'm in the history books and that's, that, that sweetens the pot. Uh, and I also worked at WJLA in Washington, and that was great because I grew up in D.C. So it was kind of cool because I worked at one of the stations and I would run the teleprompter for some of the news anchors at another station. But then when I actually got a job um, at a competing station, I was then competing against the very people that I used to run the teleprompter for. And I was home. Uh, DC is home for me. I grew up there. My dad was a congressman. So um, WJLA was fabulous. Uh, Washington's great. Uh, New York is great as well. Okay, my second question, Isabel wants to know, have I ever experienced racism? Hi, Ms. Stokes. I'm Isabel Pineda. I'm in the fourth grade. Have you ever experienced racism while doing a report? Yeah, I have. I have, you know, there are a lot of people with, um, with their ideas about, about other individuals based on ignorance or just not being aware. And um, you can't let it get to you. Listen, I know anytime I walk into a room, people see me, they see a black woman. That doesn't mean I have limitations. And I think that's what you have to understand. Now, have I had to straighten some people out? Absolutely, I have. But um, I'm proud of who I am. And um, I have experienced racism uh, within my own newsroom, not here, not here at Fox, but um, when I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, and, um, and on, out on the streets, on stories as well. Um, but I think those, that's just part of, you have to have a thick skin. You have to realize that the other person with the limitations, not you. And, and you have to block that out. I know it's easier said than done, but you really have to block it out and keep it moving and know that um, you know what's right and, and stick with that. But unfortunately, that's a part of life. That's a part of life. I'm in the fourth grade. When did you know this is what, this is what you wanted to do? 
I knew when I was at Howard University and um, I was an English major and then I switched over to broadcast journalism and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with interviewing people and listening to people and coming back and writing a story and I liked the hustle and having a deadline and um, talk about a responsibility. I think being a journalist is a real responsibility. Uh, you owe it to the person who is listening to you, watching you, or if you're print journalism, reading your stories. And um, I, am, I am happy doing what I do. I find great, great pleasure in, in what I do. Uh, I love sitting on the anchor desk. I love being out in the field telling a story. And it took me a while. I didn't know this when I was a little girl. So I was, you know, like 20, 21, when I really knew what I wanted to do. But I always knew I wanted to be a writer. My whole life I've known I've wanted to be a writer. I just didn't know I wanted to, um, to be a journalist. I thought I really wanted to just be a novelist and write books. I'm Myla Maldonado, I'm 10 years old, and how, how was your childhood? What was it like? Um, my childhood. I had the best childhood ever. Um, I'm the baby of, of four kids. I have two sisters and a brother, and um, my dad and I were very best friends. My mom and I are very best friends as well. I was always encouraged. Um, to do whatever I wanted. Um, my father always said to all of us, um, be what you want to be. Don't, don't be what you think I want you to be. Uh, whatever you choose in life, be happy with it. And as a kid, oh geez, I, no, I took ballet, I took acting classes, I ran around with my mom, I was on a bowling league, um, when my dad ran for Congress, I was six years old. And so I would go out on the campaign trail as a little girl with pigtails and knock on people's doors and say, vote for my daddy. And I, um, I was privileged to, to be able to be surrounded by other very famous people that my father worked with. And, um, and there was just always happiness in my household. I, I, it, you know, it may sound too good to be true, but it is true. I, um, and I'll tell you one other thing that I've lived by. My father taught me to always tell the truth. And I think that is what, even if you get in trouble, and I think that's what has um, given me such contentness in life. You know, I've never had to make up a story. I've always just told the truth and dealt with the blow or whatever it was and always had peace of mind. I, I, I find great um, it's a great quality to know you're a truthful person. Um, you can sleep well at night, but no, I had the best childhood ever. Um, you know, I was born in Cleveland, grew up in DC and, um, yeah, I think that's why I smile a lot. I, I, I'm very blessed and I realize that. How has quarantine affected your job? Uh, quarantine. Hmm. Quarantine has really been a doozy, hasn't it? Almost a year. We've learned a whole nother way of life like this, like me having to compute, um, communicate with you this way. Um, I think we've learned to love each other a little bit more, have a little bit more patience, listen more, um, and really appreciate the simple things in life. I love to cook. And so for quarantine, it's been great for me because I'm back in the kitchen, even though I have two daughters, one is 28 and no, yeah, one's 28, she will be, and the other is 26. And so they're big girls and they've gone on and they have great careers. And so I kind of stopped cooking for just me, but now I'm cooking for me again and I'm having a lot of fun. And, and of course at work, we've had to learn, you know, we don't have guests anymore coming in our studio. So we have to use Zoom as well. Um, I just keep trying to have patience, uh, get the vaccine and know that, um, we have a new normal, but that's okay. As long as we have our health and people we love and good friends, uh, family, 
um, it's, we'll get through it. We'll get through it together. Um, thank you for your questions. They were really hard hitting. They were really good questions. Um, I look to all of you as the future. And I want you to know that the mere fact that you've asked me just to play a small role in your life today, um, I'm, I'm honored and I'm flattered. And I, I know you all are going to do great things in life. And, and there's no better time than to be a girl, be a woman. We have a vice president that's a woman. We have women CEOs out there. We have doctors that are advising, that are our top experts. We have the head of, of the commerce department. Like we have, women are doing great things and you are going to do great things as well. So let's just keep going along with what we have to, wear our masks, practice social distancing, um, really be strong with our sisterhood, love one, one another, be respectful, study hard, be kind. Um, you're going to do great. I have a lot of hope and expectations. Yeah, I'm raising the bar on you guys, but only because I know you can do it. I hope that uh, I get to meet you one day in person, and we don't have to do it this way. But in the meantime, be strong. Congratulations on being fabulous yous, women, girls rule. And um, thank you very much.